Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paper Talk. Today, we have Sarah Simon of the Mint Gardener to chat with us about watercolor and flowers, our favorite things. Sarah paints beautiful botanicals with ink and watercolor, and she's the author of Modern Watercolor Botanicals. We are super excited to talk to her about how we, as paper florists, can incorporate more watercolor into our work. Welcome, Sarah. It's such a joy to finally chat with you. Welcome, oh, Sarah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Quinn and Jesse, for having me. I'm Sarah Simon of the Mint Gardener, like you mentioned. And yes, I'm so honored to get to talk to other flower enthusiasts. It's so exciting. Yay. And you guys, if you have not checked her Instagram handle, check out her videos. She's always on Instagram, painting away, showing you beautiful techniques and her beautiful illustrations. She is so amazingly talented. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you guys so much. It's such a pleasure. It's so fun. It's so cool speaking about flowers, but in speaking about through a different artistic medium. Like I'm used to using watercolor paper and all of a sudden being able to paint on crepe paper is just this, it's a whole new world. It's really exciting. I'm thrilled. Yay. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to season two of the Paper Talk podcast, where we have candid conversations with artists and industry leaders from around the world. Our goal is to share knowledge, connect our community, and elevate the artistry of our craft. Hi, I'm Jesse Chu. Hello, I am Quinn Wynn, and we are the founders of the Paper Florist Collective. Where should we focus? I feel like there's so many aspects of you, Sarah. And do you want us to promote your second book and what, what you learned from the first one and how you were Actually, able technically to... technically the third book as oh, crazy as that that's is. That's right, the third because book. Because I have the coloring book and my that's publisher right. kept saying book three and I'm like, I've only written two. And he's like, duh, the coloring book. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too, right? Yes. We can talk about that. I mean, I think promoting the classes, like... Just see what you were saying with accessibility. I really, really feel that when we make creating more accessible and more people are able to access a process, it removes the scary, right? Mm -hmm. So when the materials are straightforward, the instructions are straightforward, all of a sudden, you know, our modern attention span, which is usually about, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. Can yeah. scroll and go, oh, I have A, I have B, I can make C. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to break things down for people. And it really takes reverse engineering to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think writing a good book, holding a good class, you see the end product and then you reverse engineer in order to make it coachable, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is an art. Okay. Actually, it is. <laughs> and not like everyone you said, can be a teacher. Yeah, not everyone <laughs> can teach. But like you said, with practice, though, too, you know, mm -hmm. just practicing. And seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to dive into this, your book, to see how you teach as well, because I think it really speaks to how you think. Like, I love reading other, well, I love learning from other people because it really, not only is it because sometimes those techniques are new for me, but also because it makes me understand better how they think. And everyone's mind works a little bit differently. Everyone pays attention to certain details that are different from someone else. And mm -hmm. that kind of flow, it, it speaks to that type of creative process that's unique to let's say you. Or sometimes I'm like, oh, that's why her flowers look like that. Or that's why she draws like that, because that's how she thinks, you know. But yeah, no, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was I, I think Quinn had sent you some crepe paper. Did you have a chance to experiment with that? Because yes, a lot of us are experimenting with different mediums, but you know, not all of us really know how to properly use, let's say, watercolors or inks or you all use pastels, but you know, I don't know if we're doing it properly. I'm sure there's no right way, but I mean, we would love to hear from someone like you who, who's so familiar with watercolors in your own unique way. And yet now having to kind of approach the, the paper a little bit differently. What did you think about that? Yeah, it was really actually fun because Quinn, when you dropped it off, I was like, so I, I can paint on this, right? Like it's a weird concept <laughs> because in watercolor, it really is only a few materials that you need to start the art, right? But the one material that makes the biggest difference with watercolor is the paper. It's the one thing that if you invest in the end product is just miles above. So you can do student grade watercolor paper, you know, and that usually has a, a wood pulp in it. And so things dry faster. And so you don't have as much time to make changes, to saturate, to desaturate, to 
the play, right? Mm -hmm. So the more higher end paper you get, there's chemicals in it. And also it's made usually of cotton. So it gives you that time. The water sits above the surface of the paper and the paint swirls and can move wherever there's moisture, right? So the paint Mm -hmm. follows the water. So in that watercolor is a very different medium. And so switching the paper is like, Whoa, this is going to be really exciting. (laughs) And I had fun. So I was like, okay, so Quinn, what do you normally do? Do you paint first water after? Do you water first paint? And she's like, oh yeah, you paint first water after. So I did that. And I found that that gave me a much more intense color. I felt like that gave me that saturation, right? I was, I was using watercolor straight out of the tube. So already I had a, a very saturated pigmented color. So that gave me very strong, like, and I did that on a lot of the green crepe paper. So it gave my leaves that really great high, low contrast. Mm-hmm. And they look amazing. Oh, by good. The way. I oh, I'm them. so glad. I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but <laughs> these look like the leaves in my garden. So I think we're, we're on the right track. Yes. But then when we were playing with the white crepe paper and we're collaborating to do some fun things in the future around roses, so we selected a few roses that were these beautiful white but it's it's incredible when you actually start looking at white how many yes. shades are and tones and beiges and yellows and pinks and just the dynamic and that's why I think we like white flowers so much is because there is so much that goes into that color or mm-hmm. that tone exactly that shade. yeah and the yeah. Really cool part is like one petal might have a reflection of a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, a little bit of green. And, but when you put it all together, it just creates this beautiful impact. That's why we love roses. It's yeah. not one dimension. There's like oh. multiple colors in there. Yeah. And then you add light and the light coming through. And all of a sudden you have this other element of dimension, right? So you just have so much to play with. So I actually discovered that because, you know, the oversaturation comes from painting first, I'm like, I'm going to play a little bit Mm -hmm. and do a little bit of water first. And I actually used water and I used this really fun brush. It's like a fan and I used gouache. And so I switched it up a little bit. I was like, I love the watercolor, but I, I want a creaminess to it. And I always say gouache is to watercolor as cream is to your coffee. So can't see my coffee right now, but what I'm drinking is a very (laughs) creamy cup of coffee, right? I I like my cream. It's my excuse, right? To get a lot of cream in in the morning. So (laughs) I, I love adding that gouache. So what I did is I watered paper down, but just along one of the edges. And then I just kind of used the fan brush to very gently introduce gouache. Mm -hmm. And then right at the end, as the water was starting to dry and the color had moved up it, I gave it a few little pops of really intense squash right at the end. So you've got that really fun gradation of color from very dark to very light in just one. And like you said, as you cut each petal, each petal is going to be so different because the pattern changes as you go down the paper. Exactly. I love that. And I really love, I mean, I was looking at the paper itself and just seeing the color was just so like, oh, why didn't I think to do that before? And so it was so (laughs) eye opening. It just like soaks up, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the interesting part is not only does it soak up, it kind of comes down a little bit because of what she said. She puts the paint as it went up. She added that an extra gouache at the very top. So it kind of bleed down a little bit, but not too much as the bottom. So that was really, really cool. And I can't wait to show photos of the finished product very soon. (laughs) <laughs> I'm too. It's, it's amazing. I love the idea of collaborating with other artists because Jesse, like you were saying, everybody thinks of the creative process so different. And yeah, you can, you know, copy someone and emulate them and learn their process, but it really becomes your own when you take the process and you imagine it and then someone else adds to it. And it's just mm-hmm. this, that's why I think collaborations and that's why I think social media has become just such an incredible thing because never before have artists been able to so easily access one another, meet one another, mm-hmm. grow off one another and work together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. yeah. I love it because actually with Jesse and myself, she's in Toronto. I'm in Seattle. We're like opposite end of North America. And (laughs) we were, we met online and then she says, oh, I'm going to be in your area. And so it was such an easy direct message. Like, yes, let's meet up. (laughs) And so we met up and we've been working for gosh, several years now. (laughs) Since 2017, 2017. Yeah. 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 Because in September, 2017 was when I, went to Vancouver and then we drove down to Seattle because Seattle's so close to Vancouver. Yes. And that was when we met. And then from since, actually since before then, but since then we've been working more intensely together. 
<laughs> before then it was kind of like, oh yeah, we are, you know, we're, I think it was just like the Facebook group. We were just monitoring yeah. and administering a Facebook group, a community of, of our paper florists. And then afterwards, once we started talking and, you know, Quinn has all these ideas. Like, <laughs> that oh, turn yeah. in, they were like this and they turned into like this. Yes. Like big, big balloon. <laughs> so Jesse reins me back. You know, it's been really fun. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm like, wait a minute. I don't want to pop this balloon, but we can get make real. this more doable. Yeah, let's get real. <laughs> yes. But no, it's great. It's like, like you said, Sarah, like finding people to collaborate with. It's so much easier now. And mm-hmm. also being able to not just collaborate with somebody, but really know somebody because in the past it was just, you know, hey, you know, you might message somebody or on Instagram. It's like, hi, bye. But now with like Zoom messenger, like we've been meeting like this for the last three years. Yes. And just now people are catching on because of COVID, right? But it's like right. the technology just makes it so much easier to work so closely with someone without even mm-hmm. like, seeing them. Or without seeing them physically anyways. Mm -hmm. Well, especially Um, with COVID, we can't see anyone. So it's been like, oh, we already do this. And so it just made sense to continue working even more. Yeah. 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 We're just all learning to make lemonade out of the lemons that, you know, life gives. Like, okay, we, as humans, we need community. We need to be together. And this is the best way to do it. And how cool that we live in a time where we can actually connect. Exactly. I love it. Mm-hmm. You want to tell us a little bit about your book? Now that you had a whole book tour planned on your website, you had a whole list of them. And now that they're postponed, what? Okay, let's first talk about your book and then we'll talk about, you know, what are your plans moving forward <laughs> in terms of promoting yeah. it? Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. So my first book is Modern Watercolor Botanicals. It is a mouthful. Beautiful, you guys. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I actually just woke up this morning and this one of my followers sent me a DM and she's like, I don't know if you've seen this review yet, but it's fantastic. And I hadn't seen it. And I'm like, we're going on a year of it almost almost a year next month being out and still read these reviews and see people getting excited. It's just mm-hmm. it's a high like no other. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I look at it on the counter and I'm like, Oh yeah, I did that. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> really cool. Cool. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I remember like the hours of my publisher going through and it's like she would spend six hours on the phone with me and we would just go through paragraph by paragraph, which picture goes here. Oh, picture B actually needs to be picture D and flip flop. But the editing process is no joke, but my publisher is fantastic. And it took about two and a half years to write um, and take all the photos, create all the projects. And so it was definitely a culmination of a long time. And while I was writing it, I was also, I'd been teaching for years. So I was able to really fine tune the writing and really base it on my subject matter, which were my live students that were there with me three or four times a month, I could pinpoint, you know, which questions were the most commonly asked questions. So it was very easy to interweave those questions and those common answers into the text. So it's there already. So people aren't going, I have to ask this question and, you know, I'm just reading a page. So the answers were already there, which was really exciting. So that was great to have just a really great study, case study, really. So once they wrote it, yeah, we did the, the book launch. Which I'm so glad we did this huge fun party in, at Studio Life, which is my favorite studio to teach at in Seattle. And and then, you know, a few short months later, the COVID hit. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. And yes, I had a lot of different places that and it was amazing to connect with people in Dallas and Raleigh and just all over the country. And then a lot of Canadians were like, why aren't you coming up here? <laughs> and, then, like, Oahu, and I was like, OK, I'm not going to pass up Waikiki. I'm going to, I'm going to hit that one off. So we did that one. We did Portland and those were, you know, in a few Seattle's and then everything kind of shut down, but in the process of everything shutting down, we still need to connect, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's so important. It's so important. And I was, everyone was kind of floundering and dealing with what does connecting look like? And also what does school look like now? Because I've got Mm -hmm. little kids that need to go away. But yeah, so basically when everything started happening, I realized that, you know, I was in close communication because not only do I enjoy teaching at Studio Life, I also enjoy the women, the two women who started it. And it was a very random, like they emailed me a few years ago and they're like, hi, you don't know us and we don't even have our studio yet, but we (laughs) know what you're doing. And, And it just, we met for coffee and, you know, like you guys were saying, you meet in person. It's one thing to meet online. And then to actually meet in person and it's just, you jive, right? It's fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, So when I realized that the book tour wasn't going to happen, I really like to set my students up with, I like to set them up for success. 
like we chatted about earlier, I really believe in accessibility in art. I love the idea of getting rid of like the cool kids club. Like I'm going to tell you exactly what you need. I'm going to explain every term. Um, color theory will not be boring. I promise. You know? <laughs> so I had all the materials. I had everything in my little storage room and I'm like, well, I have everything. And here Studio Life is not sure if they're going to be able to keep their doors open. So I was like, well, what do you think about becoming like a shipping packing place? <laughs> and they're like, shoot, if it pays rent, they're like, we'll figure out Zoom for you. We'll pack your supplies. We'll manage all your attendees. You just have to show up. And perfect. it's been perfect. So yeah. we, you know, it's been great. They don't mind. I think they've started to have fun with it. And yeah. they get to really connect with all the people that are messaging and like, hey, I want to sign up. And in, in a way, we've actually been able to connect with more people because of this, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm in Raleigh, there's only 30 spots, yeah. right? For yeah. one day. Yep. So now it can be anyone in the country and we've been moving the workshops earlier in the day so that we can do pivot coast time at maybe noon so that even England can tune if they want to. So Yay. yeah, it's been, it's been really awesome and really kind of cool. And it's also fine tuned to my teaching process again, honing mm -hmm. it for the next book that's coming out. And it's crazy to think that COVID has actually shaped how I teach, but I've learned that the technology, the way to communicate watercolor when I teach is actually easier now using the down angle camera and mm -hmm. people can see the technique better. Mm -hmm. So when we move back to being in person, our new normal, I'm going to have a projector so that people can see it up on the wall so they can see really close up like they are, you know, but it'll all be, you know, live. So we know you you're working on a third book. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So I did Modern Watercolor Botanicals, and while they were editing it, I kept emailing them like, hey, do you have anything for me to do? Hey, you want me to edit? You know, hey, I can help. <laughs> um, and they're like, how about you do a coloring book while we edit? I was like, okay. <laughs> so that was book two. And I did, a, we did like, you know, a big color coloring book run. Um, it was the Plant Lady Coloring Book. And I just heard it's going to be carried in Anthony. Apology soon. Yay! Is. Congratulations! Hey, I know. I'm super <laughs> excited. That'll be fun. But yeah, it's, that was a blast. And then, but you know, no words really. So that that was a quicker process. But the, yeah, the third book is it's really a another chance for me to go. Okay, modern watercolor was definitely the the encyclopedia of watercolor. I've written down all the techniques, all the processes. You've got close up pictures showing you every single step. And I wanted to do something more. I do a flower painting club. So much like your subscription box and the idea that, you know, you can make this flower this month. <laughs> I do a painting club. I love so that. It's so much fun. It's mm -hmm. such a, again, such a great chance to hone in onto a small community that loves the same things that are all going through the same things together. And mm -hmm. it's just been a blast. So I started this flower painting club in January and then it's again become this place where I can ask questions and they're like, yeah, I loved this piece because so I took a lot of the pieces that I designed for the flower painting club, which they get a new one every month and I give them step-by-step -step instructions and video. So we've translated that into a book and it's new pieces as well. I've also discovered that a lot of people really enjoy color recipe mixing because color can be such an amazing expression of self. Brand color psychology really affects how you feel when you see something at, at such a deeper level than we're aware. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just kind of discovering that and playing with that. So I've given in this new book, there's eight colors, but we make over 50 rest. That's amazing. Yeah. Fun. Love it. Yeah. So we're going to spend mm -hmm. time mixing colors and then all the lines will be printed onto watercolor paper in the book. Wow. Yeah. Which that's amazing. Published, yeah, my publisher was like, wait, what? How can <laughs> <laughs> you make this happen? <laughs> I know. I was like, it's thick paper. I know it's expensive, but it's so worth it. Everyone will just go crazy. So it's 300 GSM paper. It's wow. Green. Yeah, it's hot in, in the paper yeah. or in the book. That's amazing. It's amazing. We're so excited. So the first half of the book is going to be kind of like basically a brush up on like what's a wash, what's wet and wet. And then you'll go to the painting portion of the book and that's all watercolor pages. And the front will be the instruction or one side will be the instructions and the other side will be the drawn lines. You'll get, you know, a suggested palette and then step-by-step -step written instructions. And then the very end is going to be tear out postcards. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. So you can show up all out? your work. Uh, spring. <laughs> Spring 2021. Wow. Oh, just a, like six so months. That is I so know. soon. Oh, 
That's yeah. so exciting. Before you know <laughs> it. Yeah. Sounds amazing. I know. I'm really excited. This will be fun. I just, we just got seven recipe testers. So mm-hmm. I'm actually packing kits for them of all the required colors. And so I'm going to get, I really like people to try these things out before and be like, oh, this doesn't work. Or, hey, have you thought about, it's nice to get other eyes on it other painters. Definitely. Okay. Since most of our listeners deal with crepe paper and we gave you some crepe paper kind of fiddle and work with, what was your thought as an initial never worked with crepe paper, but use the watercolor, we use the gouache, any tips that you want to offer to our listeners as they're using these mediums on crepe paper. And we're using German crepe papers, what I gave her, because this is probably the easiest one that will absorb watercolor or gouache or acrylic and not really throw things off too much. The crepe paper that I had been familiar with was like, I imagined, you know, the streamers that you hang up at birthday parties. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how that's going to work with watercolor. <laughs> but Quinn, the, the crepe paper you gave me was amazing. First, I was amazed that just at the durability of it. Yes. It, stretchy. It's very forgiving. It took water well. Mm -hmm. It was pretty awesome. It dried quickly. I think that the biggest tip that I can give when you're combining watercolor plus the crepe paper was work with tube paint. So a lot of people, when they think of watercolor, they think of the little pans that, you know, you got in kindergarten that had all the primary colors and they get (laughs) muddy really quickly. And you're like, oh, (laughs) I want your watercolor. (laughs) Yeah. So the tube paint actually comes out wet So it already has a water percentage in it. And the saturation of color is just so much more incredible than a pan watercolor. Now, pan if you're using pan watercolors, and that's what you have, if you add just a little drop of water on top of the pan watercolors and let it sit for a few minutes, that will actually give you a closer consistency to what you should be working with. And that was fantastic. And I would also suggest using a large brush. I generally tend to use smaller detailed brushes. I use the round. And thanks to Princeton brushes who are fantastic, they sent me a whole bunch of brushes and I I'm staring at them as I'm going, what am I going to use? And there's this fabulous <laughs> fan brush. And I was like, oh, this will be perfect. It'll emulate like the, you know, the beautiful, I'm looking at dahlias out in my garden right now, like the deep saturation that's usually at the center of the flower. And then as the petal ages and curls, you know, the color moves up from the center of the petal and blends into the edges that are usually a bit soft right Mm -hmm. so that fan brush really enables you to get that deep saturation and then slowly decrease the pressure and decrease the color as you move up the petal I'm so excited so I'm in the process of putting together cutting the paper up it's so beautiful it's like a piece of art already and I feel like, oh my gosh, I have to cut this, but I'm really excited to cut into it and form something else. It's like that hesitation, but like oh, inspired at the same time. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was really fun to put paint on something that generally you're like, should I put paint on this? You know, yeah. kind of like mm-hmm. painting on the walls, but it's going to be a much better outcome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in learning from Sarah and from me, we are actually putting together a course with Holly Chapel virtual flower stock event that's happening in mid-October. If you go to their website, um, hollychapel.com, you can find more information about it. And we'll also put a link in the show notes for you guys to check it out. We would love for you to take a look at it and come and learn how to paint on crepe paper. Well, I'm excited. So, Oh, it's so mm-hmm. exciting for you guys. I want to see all the materials. <laughs> I want to see the roses. I want to see the paint, like all the behind the scenes. Like it's going to be so exciting. What a great mm-hmm. opportunity to like work together and work with Holly as well. Yeah, Holly's amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's a force of nature. I, she is. I met her for the first time just, I think she messaged me and she's like, are you are you doing book tours over on the East Coast? And I was like, I am now. (laughs) (laughs) Sign me up. You are amazing. So, yeah. Did you know she has seven children? I did. We got on the phone and it came up that I'm the oldest of five. And she's like, oh, well, I've got seven. And I'm like, (laughs) how do you do anything with seven children? Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. Super amazing. Thank you so much, Sarah, for being on Paper Talk today. It was such a pleasure talking to you and just chatting about this beautiful art medium, watercolor, and gouache, too. It is such a pleasure to be able to talk with fellow artists that also love flowers and painting and all of the beautiful botanical things. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Paper Talk. We'd love to chat more later on. Maybe we can talk more about watercolors and inks. And then when your book comes out in the spring, 
we'd love to hear more about that because mm-hmm. we we too love flowers. Yes. Sounds wonderful. 